On 802.11 wireless networks, there is a set of standards that defines what frequencies and what channels these particular networks might use. This is from the IEEE, and these standards are used around the world. If you look at 802.11a, B, G, and N, you'll see that those are the primary standards that we're using today. When we talk about our wireless networks, we usually will say, oh, that's an 802.11b network. That one is an 802.11n network. There are other standards in between all of those. We didn't skip from A to B and suddenly go to G. There are actually other standards that are intermixed in there. But the large overriding standards for each of those types is listed as the A, B, G, and N. And there are many many differences between all these standards. There's differences in speeds and distances. Then there are a lot of differences in the type of frequencies that can be used. And of course, as you go from country to country to country, there are also a number of differences there as well. The focus of this particular video will be to give you an overview of all of those and perhaps show you in the United States where we happen to use some of those frequencies. Let's start at the 5 gigahertz range. This is primarily used in 802.11a and 802.11n. 5 gigahertz frequencies were not part of the standards for the 802.11b or the 802.11g. 802.11a uses these 5 gigahertz frequencies using something called a dynamic frequency selection. This is a relatively new addition to the standard. And by adding this DFS functionality, your access point will intentionally avoid interference with things like radar or military type systems. And that way, you're able to coexist with other things that might be using those 5 gigahertz frequencies. The type of multiplexing that is done for these 5 gigahertz frequencies in these standards is something called OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And what that really means is you're able to send out the frequency in many different channels all at the same time, and they're not going to conflict with each other. There are 23 non-overlapping channels that are used here. And as we mentioned earlier, different channels will be used in different countries to be able to accomplish this. In 802.11n, we added also something called MIMO, which stands for Multiple Input and Multiple Output. You'll often see in an 802.11n access point, there will be multiple antennas there. That's because you're able to transmit and receive more than one at a time. You can have up to four transmits and four receives on an 802.11 11 network. And that way, you're able to send and receive a lot more traffic at one time. The 2.4 gigahertz frequency range has a number of different wireless standards that are using it. One of the very first ones to use it was 802.11b. And it communicated using a method called direct sequence spread spectrum, which is DSSS. Each bit of the signal is put into something called a chip, and it's sent out across different frequencies. And it's using a lot of hopping around different frequencies to send that traffic in an effort to avoid any type of interference. One of the things about DSSS is both sides, both access points, or both devices on both ends have to be able to know what that predefined sequence is so it can be listening appropriately for the traffic that happens to be coming in. 802.11b has 14 channels available for it. Each channel is 22 megahertz wide. And these channels are spaced at 5 megahertz intervals. And as you can see, there's overlap there. If they're spaced at 5 megahertz and they're 22 megahertz wide, you're going to have quite a bit of overlap. And that's why we tend to use a different channel like channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11 only because we know those channels will not conflict with each other. In the United States, we use 11 of these channels. Other countries are able to use channels 12, 13, and 14. For 802.11g and 802.11n that are running at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range, those are also using a type of modulation called OFDM, very similar to the 802.11a we were talking about. They are using the same frequencies, of course, as the 802.11b. But because this is a different modulation scheme, we're able to send traffic in a different way across these networks. In 802.11g, we generally use channels 1, 5, 9, and 13, so they will overlap. Notice the channel 
channels are 20 megahertz wide. So it's very similar in how we would separate out the channels to prevent any type of conflict to what we saw in 802.11b. If it ever needs to go down to the slower speeds, like a 1 megabit per second speed, it's going to go way back and use the same type of DSSS modulation that the 802.11b did. So even though it's G and N, it could be using different modulation types depending on the types of speeds you can expect to go through it. 802.11n, however, uses a very wide channel, a 40 megahertz wide channel. And so you'll see channels 3 and 11 that are being used if you're talking about an 802.11n network using OFDM. That's a lot of different types of frequencies. It's a lot of different types of channels. So there's one picture that came from Wikipedia. I put the Creative Commons license at the bottom so you can see this, that talks about 802.11b. And you can see the overlap in the channel for the 802.11b, the 22 megahertz channels, channels 1, 6, 11. And then we snug up here to channel 14. For the 802.11g and n that are using OFDM, these are 20 megahertz wide channels. And you can see channels 1, 5, 9, and 13 are here. And if it is 802.11n only, it has 40 megahertz wide channels. You can send a lot of traffic very quickly over the N networks using that channel 3 and channel 11. So it depends on the type of wireless network you're planning to use and exactly how you're planning to implement it. You may be using the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz channels to accomplish that. But recently, there has been a new type of frequencies available, the 3.7 gigahertz. And you don't often hear this associated with our wireless networks. This is only for 802.11. 11A. And this was created specifically as a licensed bit of spectrum. You can't just buy a device and run 3.7 gigahertz unless you have very specifically gotten a license to do so. And when you do, you can go over very high speeds here and over a very long distance at a very high power. You can go up to 5,000 meters over 802.11a. Obviously, that's something that today is done in the United States with that licensing. There are not many places around the world using this particular frequency range to do this. But if you are a government agency or one that needs a very specific use of 802.11a, you might be able to license the 3.7 gigahertz spectrum just to be able to do that.